Hey, Dan. Hey, Justin. Hey, Erica. I dropped a meeting link in the chat. Um, I think we need two scribes still today. So if anyone can help scribe, uh, if you put your name down, that'd be great. All right, looks like we have a small group today. I'm guessing a lot of the work items are done last week. <laughs> so, um, so I guess we will, let's spend some time with um, going around and then doing check-ins and then we can talk about a couple of things as well as, you know, um, figuring out some of the coupon plans. Um, so if you haven't already, I'm going to repaste the link into the meeting meeting chat. Um, please add yourself to attendance. And if there's anyone that can help subscribe, um, that'd be great. All right, so I guess let's start with check-ins. Um, Dan, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, uh, quick kind of a little bit more personal update. Uh, I um, you know, sort of self-identified folks. Uh, I'm you know, no longer uh, at PayPal. Uh, still in, uh, um, you know, kind of figuring out what's next and yeah, you know, dealing with that. So uh, my um, the, the department that I joined uh, there uh, got shut down. So it got reorged, and uh, uh, so um, starting the year off with uh, some fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Justin. Oh no, update. Um, okay. Uh, Martin, no update. I'm just going to go through the list um, on the Zoom as well because I think some of the names are not in there. Um, no update, Ray Arica. Hey, uh, not much update from me or for the Kubernetes side. Uh, we've been pretty much similar, kind of just roll it, getting back into the new year, um, working Thanks on so. policy violation resource type. Uh, that's, if anyone's interested in that, our meeting, we'll have a meeting later today at 3 p.m. Pacific time, if anyone's interested. Um, that's all I've got. All right, thank you. Um, Okay, Robert's on another call. Cameron? Uh, can you hear me? Yep. <clears throat> no real updates here. I've just been, uh, I've been off and on joining meetings every week and keeping updated. Um, I haven't heard from anybody on uh, the Washington DC events that are going on yet. Um, I. I know that you've been having some meetings. I haven't received any meeting invites. So whoever was heading that up, uh, certainly reach out to me. Um, and also I'm, I'm 
Go ahead. Uh, is this with uh, the financial uh, user group? Are you talking about that or something else? Um, maybe oh. it was with them. I, I don't know. I, I've, I've heard of a, uh, there was some kind of event that they were kicking off in Washington, D.C. I don't know who it was that was heading that up, but uh, let's see if I can find that. Um, I wanted to be involved with that and some of the planning. Um, and then, of course, um, I certainly like to be involved uh, with anybody that is uh, doing any of the, you know, validation for any of the new projects coming on board in the CNCF. I'd like to be involved with that to kind of shadow and kind of learn. So. Well, the, the best way to do that is to um, we have a bunch of projects that are at different processes, like different states of the process for the security assessments. I'll post a link to some of that um, here in the chat. <clears throat> and you can just go into one of those projects, hopefully one where there isn't already like five people listed as signed up and uh, just put your name, say you're interested and um, then we'll let add you to the list. Okay. Cameron, looking at the, the notes, um, you know, if you, if you signed in on um, the agenda and, and notes document, um, I see Mark Underwood, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, previously uh, discussing something about Washington. Um, you know, that, that's the area of the world that he's uh, in. So uh, um, you may want to reach out to Mark. Okay, sounds good. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, and just so everybody knows, um, SUSE is also hiring. So you just lost your job at PayPal. If you're interested in an opportunity to, uh, to join SUSE and our application delivery team uh, in development, uh, we, uh, we have openings there, so. Appreciate it, thanks, sir. All right. Um, uh, Eric? Sorry, I don't have any updates for myself. I just added my, my name to the to the list. All right, cool. Um, Matthew. I can't pronounce your last name. I think it's Matthew Gassi. Hi there, Matthew. Uh, Jess, close enough. Uh, no one ever gets it the first time. Uh, I am just a uh, Relative uh, newcomer here, I uh, got the idea to join after meeting some of your colleagues at the KubeCon San Diego conference last year and was just uh, looking out here, plus uh, on your Slack channel on how best to contribute. Uh, in my spare time, I'm doing some work on creating uh, hardening profiles for Alpine Linux and Debian, as well as generic OPA and uh, Weave L3 policies, sort of like the start of a homemade uh, security best practices thing that I wanted to contribute to and build on. So I was wondering if I could just reach out to this community and see if that overlaps with any existing efforts and that's the direction I should push them so it goes somewhere instead of being a homemade project that lives for a year on GitHub and then becomes deprecated. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I think I think Justin and I were working on um, some stuff around the landscape which I think is a kind of a little bit broader, but I think parts of it definitely, you know, it's about, okay, what are the processes you do for hardening and stuff like that. Um, so I, I think Justin and I will probably give a presentation to a group on this at some point and you know, do some sharing. Um, but I think that's, that's probably a, a good place um, for what, what you're working on. Could I reach out to you via email after the meeting just to maybe grab a link or some additional direction or points of contact? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, TK, no update. Okay, I think that's everyone. Um, well, actually, uh, Michael? It looks like he doesn't have audio connected, so. All right, so um, before we jump into the agenda, um, any items from partner six and working groups, uh, SIG off policy, 
uh, security audit and NIST. All right, cool. Um, so I think this, we only have a couple of items today to discuss um, the first one being uh, time zone rotation. Um, actually, let me share my screen. Um, so this one is around time zone location. So this is really around um, making the SIG security me meetings accessible for uh, for people in different time zones. So I think there's a, a big issue with you know folks in China that want to uh, get into this. Um, so there are a couple of suggestions there out there. Uh, I think one of the suggestions was we should rotate the meetings around um, KubeCons so that we can get um, mm. some engagement there. So nice. and since we have um, you know, KubeCon EU coming up, um, maybe we should kind of shift the meetings a little bit to see whether we can accommodate. Um, but I guess just thoughts on this, uh, especially if you know, you're someone in in the Uber region, like is this timing okay or is that more preferable timing? I think every time we switch time zones like this, um, <clears throat> we're going to have a drop off in regular in some of the regular participants, and we're going to have a shift in institutional knowledge about it. And I'm not sure that we're ever going to get that back when it rotates back. Because, you know, for instance, if I'm out of this for six months because I can't make the calls, yeah, and then I, you know, I, I may have kind of moved on and started doing other things and so on. So I'm, yeah, gotcha. I'm a little concerned. I think having additional meetings or having, um, you know, like subgroups and having people bridge those is good, but I don't think it should just wholesale move. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Um, yeah, I like the idea of uh, additional meetings, you know, maybe once a month and the three different time zones or something like that. Um, yeah, I believe that's what Sick Docs does. They have one meeting um, for uh, the Asia site that happens uh, once a month um, and yeah, usually in the evening. Okay. Uh, that sounds like a good idea. Um, and I guess that's mainly for, for Asia time zone, right? Because uh, Euro time zone seems, I guess it's also evening time. It's around 6 p.m. Um, yeah, maybe we can, let's figure it out and then we can possibly create one or two more. Um, Dan, what are your um, thoughts on this? So, I'm a huge proponent and kind of set up the uh, current timings for these meetings. I'm a huge proponent of consistency. Um, it's how you build momentum in um, in you know any sort of community activity. Um, you know that said, uh, you know now that we have um, you know. Uh, a regular cadence of uh, you know working group working uh, meetings like this one, um, you know having one of those uh, a month uh, align closely with um, you know our, our various uh, you know geographically distributed groups uh, and, and aligning that with with Qcom um, sounds uh, really uh, interesting and. Um, you know what I'd what I'd love to do uh, eventually is uh, you know uh, to federate um, you know having uh, groups where you uh, you know can delegate and <clears throat> have a contingent of folks that are uh, meeting regularly in you know a European uh, friendly time zone and you know a um, Asia Pacific time zone. Um, you know, would be fantastic. And then, um, you know, a, a smaller contingent of folks 
uh, you know, w would be able to, you know, uh, coordinate uh, across the, the, you know, various um, communities. Okay. Um, I just write this down. Um, to the, the point of adding an additional meeting, um, you know, is there anyone who's like, yeah, you know, five or six meetings, uh, you know, in, in addition to, um, you know, the, the time it takes for, for, you know, contribution and, uh, you know, participating in Slack and, uh, um, you know, on, on GitHub, um, is that, uh, you know, a commitment of time that anyone's like, yeah, I can do that because I, I actually get a little bit uncomfortable in, in uh, you know, my ability to, to, to commit uh, that time, um, you know, if, if you push into that, uh, you know, more, more than more than one uh, additional meeting because I have, you know, uh, chair meetings and TOC coordination meetings. Uh, so, uh, you know, yet another meeting, um, you know, kind of pushes my boundaries a bit personally. I I think one way to start out small might be to have a meeting that's almost entirely offset from this one, like, you know, mm. 11 hours or 13 hours or something like that apart and to have it maybe only every other week or something so that it's less, less frequent. Mm -hmm. And then we can sort of see how that goes and channel things between, I mean, we all travel from time to time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to be in Malaysia next week. Right. So if there were mm. a sync security meeting that was offset by 11 hours, I could probably join that. Right. Um, and, and then, um, you know, and we could decide if one or more, maybe, you know, one of the chairs can pop into those meetings or at least one of the chairs slash tech leads and sort of always be in those meetings in the beginning. And then maybe we get a tech lead in that community and you know, who, who right. always attend those calls and, you know, we, we can just sort of see. Justin, uh, would you um, be, be open to facilitating? I know you're, you're <laughs> drag, dragging one of the, the, uh, the chairs of tech leads in. Um, but, you know, to kick that off, um, you know, beyond, you know, showing up, um, you know, in those first iterations, would you, um, you know, be the anchor? Because sometimes you just need, uh, you know, a, an individual in a seat and, uh, you know, somewhere for folks to go and discover. I mean, if it's like, uh, you know, like showing up to help to run the meeting the first time, mm -hmm. I, I don't mind doing that, if, especially if it's at a day and time when I'll actually be awake at whatever time this, this is. Um, but yeah, in, in general, I, I don't mind uh, participating in the first or certainly one of the early ones and won't mind doing it um, when travel and things like that mean that it's it's convenient what, what if so we, we have this uh, kind of intro deck that we're working on and updating again for KubeCon um, what if uh, you know those uh, sort of off hours meetings you know had a default of um, hey we're going to introduce folks to what we do. Uh, you know, if uh, uh, someone's available to, to take on that, that time slot, uh, here's the, here's the script, Here, here's the you know, presentation. We're going to, uh, you know, walk everybody through that, um, have everybody, you know, kind of go around the room, introduce themselves and, you know, maybe at the end ask, um, you know, anybody if, uh, um, you know, if they're interested in coming back. Well, the, um, I mean, basically, we just show them this video, and this is how we run our working meetings. And and then um, I think having a model that's similar to the one we have, where if there are presentations of interest, then those happen mm -hmm. every other meeting or so. And then there can be working meetings other time. Like I've had someone reach out to me this week and ask me, say, hey, I'm in New Zealand, but I want to contribute to security assessments. And so we're trying to plan a time next week to talk about that. So that would be so I, like, it would be a perfect thing for that meeting. Sorry, go ahead. So, so actually on that, uh, one thought that I had was maybe we can, um, if it comes out, we can pick a security assessment of a project that's in the Asia region. And then possibly have the team there 
um, around this, which will, you know, kind of build a community. And eventually, if we do like the KubeCon Shanghai, we could have them also co-present mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. at KubeCon. Yeah. Assuming there are still people living in Shanghai at that time. <laughs> I'm sure there will. <laughs> a lot of people there. Yeah. Um, if not anywhere else, I mean, there's also a lot of Kubernetes forums that are happening nowadays as well around the Asia area. But I don't think those, um, I don't think they have community tracks there. So it may be a bit tough. Community track in, um, in, in China, we, the last time there was, um, Liz, uh, you know, uh, took and, and ran the intro session there for us. Um, I don't know if they changed the format this year, but uh, I would expect uh, a continued um, you know, presence of, of the local groups. Yeah. Of the I, I was, uh, I did the one, one of the years before as well. And I think the, um, there was quite a good outcome in the session. Um, it was kind of awkward because a lot of them that were interested in it couldn't actually meet the meetings. So, mm, right. Okay. So it sounds so, like. Uh, um, Yeah, I'm just thinking like going forward, maybe um, what I can do is, uh, since I created this suggestion, unless someone else wants to, to take a step at this, create an initial PR and then we can chat about it. And, Sounds great. Yeah, and then, I mean, it would just be an extension of this, right? Um, but just to just to move things all in. Yeah, thanks for, for pushing for this. This is, you know, one of those it's one of the, the big challenges of, you know, global open source communities is, you know, you fundamentally uh you know need to get everybody in and find a way for them to participate. Um, but you know, um your contingent of you know mostly volunteers um you know can't uh spread themselves uh thinner than they already are uh so uh you know bootstrapping um you know groups that that can uh, support local communities is uh um you know an interesting logistical challenge all right that sounds good um so it's Uh, so any other um, comments on this? If not, I think we'll go ahead with um, the rest of the agenda. Brendan, when you, when you uh, talk to folks in uh, you know, the Shanghai um, meeting, are, are, are folks you know, actively participating in you know, kind of meetup style uh, functions or um, do folks tend to you know, kind of do their work and then you know, um, you know, deal with their home stuff and and, and not you know sort of participate in program communities. Um, it doesn't seem like that big a thing, um, at least chatting around with people. Um, but it may also just be regional. I I don't think I I understand the community that that well to to kind of right. make a statement about it. Um, but it, it wasn't something that, that seemed to come up when I was chatting with people. Right. I, yeah, I don't want to go into the assumption that, uh, you know, everyone, everyone does meetups, you know, we were just, you know, programmers that love to get together and, and uh, uh, you know, share, share our thoughts and share our experiences, um, you know, because, uh, you know, having lived in, in Europe, um, you know, the the habits are, are, are slightly different. Opportunities yeah. are different too. Cool. All right. So um, the next item that we have is I, I just chatted with Sarah about this is 
um, to try and put in another session. So I believe we have currently one session um, for the intro and then uh, Justin and I were talking about doing some of the landscape stuff in the, the deep dive. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that there would be more than one topic that we could put into the deep dive. So I'm not sure whether anybody, um, if there's some interest, whether it's you know, from the policy group or, or some other projects, assessments. Um, if I think we can pick a few topics, we, we can have enough material for a longer session. Do you have the, um, do we have assigned individuals for, um, for both those sessions? So for intro currently on the, on the list is Sarah and JJ, I think. Um, we don't actually have a session on deep dive yet. It's well, at least it's not on the, on the schedule. Um, but Justin and I were talking about presenting our work on the landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure whether that will fill up the entire half an hour. I hope not. Yeah, I mean, I, exactly. I, think, uh, um, I think it's a good discussion topic and good thing to show, but I hope it's more of here's what we're doing. Let's get some thoughts and um, maybe have quick discussion and then something like, you know, uh, that'll take maybe 10 minutes the slot. And we probably need one or two plants in the audience to ask a first question or to make a first suggestion because otherwise everyone's too scared in that context. And, and just uh, uh, to, to confirm, this, this is Kapos, not uh, um, Cormac. This is Kapos. Yeah, yeah. Right, cool. Okay. Cormac is probably um, going to be uh, pretty pretty hard to wrangle given his new responsibilities. Right. <laughs> yeah. Great. Right. Um, so, you know, we have, we have designated speakers, um, you know, uh, do you want anybody in sort of uh, a uh, content development uh, support? It's a great time to sort of, uh, you know, enlist. You know, enlist. So, so uh, just tonight, I think I, I, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm missing a little of the context. Do you mean for the landscape, Dan, or do you mean in general? Right, right. Just to help, you know, support the, um, you know, getting slides together um, and getting everything ready. Um, do you feel like, uh, you know, um, you have a, a, a sense of, of what goes in content wise uh, or would you, would you like? Uh, any sort of support? I, I've had multiple conversations with Amy and Luke, and um, I am not, every time I end the conversation, I'm sure that things will be starting to happen because it feels like that's what we've agreed to. And then I will post a follow-up message in Slack, and I'll hear like something else that seems like maybe it's not happening. So I, I don't really know. Um, it, it could just be like, I'm not asking the question in the right way or something like that. But um, we could probably talk about this offline and maybe there's a way for you to help, uh, but we don't need to take up time in this, in this meeting um, to, talk about, to talk about that, I think. Got it. Oh, but as for content itself, um, our philosophy has been, we, we uh, uh, Brandon and I have done effectively something like maybe a fifth or so, a rough draft of like a fifth of what the eventual content will be. But it's a coherent fifth that gives you an idea of what the whole thing will look like. And so um, what we want to do is we want to get this in a format that people can give us like really meaningful feedback on and look at and understand. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then it, assuming that we all think this is a good thing, then we'll go and, and actually, um, you know, flesh this out and, and um, have a ton more work that happens by a lot of different people. Great. 
So it's really just sort of adapting what we've already written down into, you know, some slides so we can, you know, talk through it. So in terms of content development and slideware, um, it doesn't sound like there's an extraordinary amount of work. No, I mean, what we'd actually like to do is do, um, like, basically three pages of what the eventual uh, web page will look like uh, with no fancy animations, no nothing, right? But that's, that's our concept is we'd like to do that and then be able to show that and then talk about, because they're, they're sort of an overall page, they're sort of a, um, a quick look at a topic and then there's a detailed look at a topic. So that's really what we're, what we're planning to do is we want to show those three things and then show some of our thoughts around how we're handling different cases in the detailed discussion, which is the document that uh, Brandon is showing right now. Yeah, let me yeah, paste that into the... But, but also, um, like, it's, I, I'm not trying to tell people don't put comments in and things, but we're not trying to wordsmith this yet. Um, okay. we, we, we more want people to, like, to show the concept, make sure the concept's valuable, because this same information can go lots of, could go lots of places and present, be presented in lots of ways and, and would have different emphasis and things like that. So, um, you know, if, if what we show makes sense and is intuitive to people and so on, then, then we sort of know a path. But if we spend a lot of time wordsmithing this and then right. go out right. in a different direction, then uh, that effort wouldn't, wouldn't have been well spent. So we kind of don't want to waste other people's time too much at this point. Sounds reasonable. All right. So I think the 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 items left for still. So so for the deep dive, if you have any topics, I know for like from the policy side, or, or maybe we can do something on assessments. Um, let me know. I think I'm gonna try and put together abstract so we can submit it and then have it on the site. The policy we have a our own. A full deep dive as well, um, but we can maybe summarize a few points and add it in if you'd like. I'll discuss at the meeting today. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. All right, and uh, I think the last few points is sort of already covered. Um, it's just kind of um, several PRs that are kind of like almost complete. They just require uh, approval from a chair. Um, so, you know, one, this is on the supply chain um, catalog and this one's on um, security review tooling. Um, and I think one adjacent item to this is, um, sorry for the, the New York graphic. Um, another adjacent item to this is a PR that I've been working on, which is introduces co-owners. Um, so the, the main idea for this is that we would have co-owners for certain things, right? So it's like Santiago is the one that's, um, let me hide the comments. That's, So for example, um, you know, Justin would be the person to look at assessment. So anything that requires, um, uh, that goes into assessment directory, as long as it would require Justin or one of the chairs to approve it. But that way also, you know, we could, uh, how it would be enforced is that um, anything that touches the directories will automatically flag these people for reviews, right? And I think in this way, we could mm -hmm. um, delegate some of the review responsibilities so that the co-chairs don't have to, to, to look at every single PR and approve it. Um, the only that, that's issue- very much in line with what we've been trying to do with that. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm very supportive of us. Um, you know, continuing to, you know, build and extend trust and, you know, work with folks who, who want to take on those responsibilities. It'd be great. Yeah. 
It has been a life changer, y'all. The the meeting facilitator thing. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Glad to help. Yeah, we have that proof point that that you know that delegation um, has you know helped our our core folks and uh, you know extended um, you know active uh, contributions. So, really happy with that. All right, so I think that's all that we had for today's agenda. So um, does anyone have uh, additional topics to discuss? All right, it sounds like we're, we're getting um, another 20 minutes back then, or 25 minutes. Awesome. We should make you facilitate more often. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talk to everybody. All right. All right. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thanks, everybody.